we've, we've discussed many of the systems that you guys have adopted across your fleets to, uh, uh, to help improve the uh, safety of your operations and to ease the burden on your driver. Uh, but how do you go about making those decisions? When you're looking at the technologies that are out there, when you're making your decisions on your investments uh, and you run your pilot programs, uh, what process do you go through and, and, and do you have drivers that, that uh, you work with that you, that you know can, can work with these, these, these systems and, and see if they'll be a good match for your, your operations? You want to take that one, Greg? Sure. Um, so when we take a look at the, the technology, uh, you know, obviously we formed a, a great relationship with, with the vendor. We're talking about the strategy and the roadmap that we want to see down the road and making sure that we're moving in the same direction. But we have the opportunity to, to go out to our employee group and we ask for volunteers. Some of them are the, you know, uh, aforementioned, you know, national champions or, or decorated drivers. But we also ask employees that care and want to know and learn about the, te the technology to try it out. Um, we learn from their experiences with it. Um, we gauge their response. Uh, we set standards prior to engaging that and see how we meet up against that. If we have some positive experiences in driver acceptance, we'll take it to the next level to integrate it into an operation at a, at a greater length with more employees to get more feedback and measure you know, what was the performance to the standards uh, that are goals that we had established. And okay. We've had a lot of success with that. Okay. With that, I'd like to go ahead and, and address some of the questions we've received from the audience. Uh, we have a good one here. Um, you know, what, what is the best way to manage the potential risks of having mixed fleets, uh, trucks or uh, trailers with different levels of technology? So if you have a partial rollout, not across your entire fleet, and some drivers may be using one technology and others using another. Uh, thoughts on that uh, topic? Well, I think, it, I think it plays into the first, in, into the previous question and, uh, you know, one of the key one of the key things to do when you're evaluating technology is to have a good understanding of your fleet and what your fleet's made up of and what your fleet experience is and what types of issues you're having in your fleet. And, you know, the sheep training of old where, one dri where all drivers get one type of training is, uh, is long over in our organization and we understand that people do have different levels of experience and, uh, um, and different needs for training and support. So when we tackle the technology, uh, we look in our fleet to say who best can benefit from this technology, um, and you know all the technology in the world is is great, but but you really have to have uh, a firm belief and uh, and conviction in managing the data that that technology provides you, um, and that that really uh, that really is how we manage. We we don't have a cross the fleet uh, sweep of of technology in anything we do. So we get to target our uh, target our audience. Uh, we bring in. People who, uh, you know, very similar to uh, Greg's comment, we bring in leaders in our business, drivers that have that are tried, true, proven, to help us test the technology. But we also bring in people beyond, and we we set up driver report cards that really talk about how we've tried to influence the performance of each driver. Great. Uh, any additional thoughts on how to manage different levels of technology throughout your fleet, uh, perhaps not across you know, all yeah. our operations? Ours is probably most extreme. We keep a truck. Uh, at least twice as long as Rob does, uh, because we only run about 85,000 miles a year on a truck, and uh, so we keep them for about six to seven years. Uh, so that the roll-in process of new technology is a protracted, long process. We also have about 40% of our fleet is owner-operators that bring their own tractor and, and use our trailers. Uh, so uh, what we implemented since parts of the fleet have different things on them uh, is a required training process every time a new truck is assigned to a, a particular CVO so that if, if uh, we give the brand new truck to one CVO and then a year and a half later it goes to somebody who had a really old truck that was traded out, they have to go through a training process and most of it on, online uh, and some of it driving around the yard or, or around the block. Uh, before they're allowed to, to go back out uh, with that new truck. So it's, it's a uh, kind of a, a process we have because we know it's going to take a while for everything. And you, just, you just can't assume that because you hire somebody with three years' experience that they've ever driven anything like what you have. Right. Any additional thoughts on that, uh, Greg? No, very similar to, to both my peers here. Um, we take time to make sure that they understand the equipment that they're driving. 
Um, we're very fortunate that a lot of our drivers stay with us for a long time, so they evolve through the equipment. Mm -hmm. And um, then they're able to share their experiences in, in operating peer-to-peer -peer when new employees come into the service center. Yeah, we've had some dis level of discussion on, on drivers and, and uh, the, the interaction between drivers and the technology. But uh, looking at some of the, the technology that's on the horizon, autonomous driving, platooning, I wanted to ask the, the panel, what do you see, how is that going to affect the driving pr profession? Uh, or or is, it, is this going to widen the driving, driving pool? Is this going to require new skills among drivers? Uh, what do you think this means for, for recruitment and retention? I think the skill set, is, it keeps getting notched higher and higher. It, it takes a lot more skill to operate a vehicle of, uh, appropriately now than it did even five years ago. Uh, and you're adding more and more technology. Fortunately, young people have grown up in this and it's not foreign to them and you don't get much resistance to the use of technology among younger people that I have with my own fleet of, of commercial vehicle operators uh, who average over 50 years old. Um, they are getting older. We're trying to keep them in the fleet longer uh, but as we uh, try to attract newer, uh, younger people, uh, I think the, uh, you know, if we could make operating a truck like uh, playing on an iPad, it would be great, and we'd have no problem attracting people. Uh, but I think that right now, that, that uh, uh, it does require a different skill set that young people have, and we just have to make the job more attractive. Sure. And Greg, uh, what do you think the, the next wave of technology will, will mean for the, the driver pool and, and driver recruiting? Well, um, I think you're still going to have to, to start with the foundation and make sure that they can drive and operate the equipment in, in, in the training. Um, what I believe is that we'll start to see some people that didn't consider driving, see that the technology is there to assist them, and maybe create that opportunity that they'll want to try it out, do some training, and experience it before they might have said, no way, I don't want any part of that. And I think it will gr create greater opportunities for us as we go forward to attract more people into a, to our industry. Very good. Any other thoughts on that, Rob? I, I totally agree. I think that we, we will be able to draw from a wider base. Uh, there are lots of drivers right now who embrace technology and think that the transition, you know, very similar to the airline, the transitions uh, uh, are, are cool and effective and, and, and really beneficial to them. Um, you know, I, I think it really will put a strain on our training systems and, and force us to do things very, very differently. But I, I see this as nothing but a, but a positive. And as we create efficiencies, take waste out of the system and risk out of the system. You can channel that into how you pay people and how you treat people and, uh, and, and, uh, and how they can supplement transportation. I see this being, being very opportunistic. And uh, Captain Skiles, uh, from, from your experience, uh, has the introduction of autopilot and, and more, more uh, technology for uh, the airlines. You know, has that made the, the job of recruiting uh, pilots easier or, uh, or more difficult? Uh, does this require additional skills or has it made the job easier? Just to get a little bit of a, an idea of what we might experience in, in trucking. Well, I think that uh, uh, as you, you know, adopt technologies, and we have, it requires actually a different set of skills, a different skill set. Um, you are a system manager, actually, more so than, than a pilot or a driver. And that has its own set of problems because human beings are not great observers. They're not great system managers. Uh, so you have to develop um, uh, systems around that to, to allow the driver to work well. For instance, this evening, I actually am based here in Philadelphia, and this evening I'm flying to Tel Aviv. It's an 11-hour flight, six hours over the water. You probably say to yourself, what is Jeff going to be doing at 2 a.m. Over, over the water? But it's actually very complex. Uh, we're Every 10 degrees of longitude, we're having to give a position report, plot our positions, make sure we have, uh, uh, we've moved on to our new course because it's not a straight line. Um, there, there's a, a large number of procedures that use this low workload environment for the crew to actually raise the safety level of the entire operation by having these defined procedures uh, that have been uh, created for us by our, by our airline management. So those are the sort of things that I think you're going to have to, that there, you probably have to do a look at a little bit uh, just to keep the, the uh, I don't want to say the interest, but uh, the alertness of your drivers uh, where it should be uh, in, as they become system managers or Great. system monitors. 
And a great question to, uh, to each of the panelists. Um, you know, how did you deal with the initial uh, resistance from drivers when you roll out a particular technology? Uh, any particular strategies as, uh, as you make that transition and, and, and first try to, to make that, that connection and, and, and sell it to the drivers? It takes a lot of selling. Um, I think explaining the technology to a lot of these people who are not familiar with it uh, is very important. That you have to understand why it works, how it works, what it doesn't do, what it doesn't take away from them, and how it will benefit them. I think all of them are inter all the, the commercial vehicle operators are interested in you know what's in it for me. Uh, and if you can make it say, okay, this will this will reduce your stress, um, you know, it'll reduce your fatigue, increase your alertness, make you feel good when you get out of the truck, um, you know make up for whatever shortcomings you might have had in the past uh, and keep you uh, being able to operate the truck for a long career, um, you get some resistance, I, I think, from everybody to anything, any change you want to make, but all you need is a few to use it and then champion it and, and they become your salespeople. Okay. Thoughts on that, Greg? Yeah, so when we think about that, I, I think we, we start with sharing the benefits, but I think we really led directly with our drivers, say we care about you. We want you to go home to your family. We want you to be safe in the communities that you operate in. These are the things that we learn from our technology and our pilots. Um, and we want, you, we want to pass this on to you. And w the drivers understand that we know what's going on. You know, through all the technology, we know their behaviors. And you make a commitment to them when it's about coaching. It's not about discipline. And it's about recognition for all the good things that they do and have had a lot of us driver acceptance for those reasons. And Rob, uh, how do you uh, uh, convince a driver that, that a technology rollout is, is the right thing for your fleet? First and foremost, uh, the rule of thumb in our place is every driver makes it home safely every trip, every time. So, so uh, they come to work knowing that's our mindset. And, uh, and then we share a lot of statistics with them. We, we look at the problem we're trying to attack uh, we show them the benefit of, uh, of resolving that issue for them personally, uh, for us as a business, for the motoring public. All of those things mean something to people who work in our, in our organization. So, so uh, and then why we picked a particular technology, what team we're assembling to deal with the integration of that technology and why they're part of the team, uh, how we'll gather feedback, how we'll tweak the training or tweak the... Uh, tweak the product. I mean, those are all things that really get people excited about change. I mean, it's not, it's not what they hear at a truck stop with lane departure or, uh, or, or collision avoidance and following distance beeping. It's about understanding uh, the, the situations we're trying to, trying to help them manage. And buy-in is, uh, once you get your senior drivers in, buy-in is pretty good. It's, uh, it becomes a really, it's an investment in them. And I think the, the common theme that we've, we've heard throughout this session, uh, first from Captain Skiles and also from our fleet panelists here, is that um, you know, the, the driver really does remain the, the centerpiece of a, of a safety program. And uh, the, the technologies that we, we add, the technologies that we invest in, help those drivers perform as, as safely as possible. So I want to quickly throw it back to the panelists for uh, additional thoughts on that. Do you agree with that assessment? And, and is that the, the, the proper uh, strategy? Is that the proper wet view of, a, of a, a good safety program? Absolutely. Uh, just like Flight 1549, uh, if it wasn't for the pilot, that, that wouldn't be a safe landing. Uh, you, know, you get to the same thing here. Uh, all the technology in the world not properly applied uh, and not adopted and, and used uh, is worthless. The person that sits in the left seat of the truck is the person who actually is your safety program. The, the person who's going to make or break you. You give them all the support you can. They got to feel good about the fact that the company cares about their welfare and their well-being and gives them the tools to operate safely. Yeah. Additional thoughts on that? Yeah. It's all about the driver. It's about building a culture within your organization that, that safety is, is first. It's investing in them, it's sharing and listening to their feedback and um, allowing them to really be the leaders in, in own and value safety for you know, their, their profession and what they do for their family. Right. And, and you as well, Rob? 
Um, I, I totally agree. It's, it's, it's exactly that. They're the quarterbacks on the highway, and they see, they see and manage the space around them. It's critically important to them uh, that we care about them. But they also know that they have a lot of pressure and a lot of respect, uh, a lot of responsibility, and they are already systems managers, and, and we're just continuing to add systems on there. And it's a system of roads and networks and technologies and responsibilities, and it's ever-changing.